All right, hello everybody. We, of course, I am Ursinity. Yes. We are Ursinity. I'm using the royal we. Uh, Mike, a, I'm sorry. Okay. I was hello. just trying to get a word in, and then you just kind of like kept going, and I thought you'd stop. I'm like, not gonna stop. Get, were you like we are? And I thought you were gonna say Ursinity. I'd be like, and proud, but you were just like we are Ursinity, and I was like, all right. It's the royal we. I'm bringing it back into style, dude. All right. And my co-host is proud, as proud has said. Hi. We, of course, are Theorycraft Thursday. We here Theorycraft, the best in, in well, our podcast type, which is a baseless rumors and speculation podcast. Right. And today we've got a few new rumors and speculations that we've got to spread amongst the people. Proud, what is your talking point of the day going to be for the next hour? Well, I heard a rumor that you were actually going to go first. Okay, I, that's a strong rumor. That one was very true, actually. We can confirm that 110 out of 10. Yeah. I am going to be talking about the rumor and speculation here that Grouty Dota, he runs an in-house league uh, under the Defense of the Patients title, and I heard that he is doing it all for profit, and he uses those profits to buy up, um, buy up animals at, from the ASPCA and then he just leaves them on people's doorsteps and he says, yeah, this is your problem now. And that's that's real bad. I don't I don't mm-hmm. like that. And that's why I'm concerned. I heard that from a very valued source. So what's yours? Well, OK, so I didn't I didn't want to like I know we, we've done a lot of things kind of about each other because like, you know, you're my world and I'm your treasure. So like we're just kind of in each other's lives a lot. But oh, I did hear something relating to you that. I've noticed, and I haven't really looked at it too close because I did, you know, like we have our own space. Um, but y- you actually, according to my sources, you made a replication of the Mona Lisa and then c- took the real, real one and actually grafted uh, her shoulder like to your abdomen, like this, the, the pic- like on the, the canvas, and that's like kind of stitch it, stitched in slash like also somehow tattooed into you i don't really know how it worked out but a lot of times when i've seen you i've been like what is that thing on on your abdomen and you're just like oh part of my shirt didn't come off and i was like that makes sense i guess but that was actually baseless and the true fact is you actually have part of a very priceless piece of art kind of grafted onto your abdomen which makes a lot of sense if i'm really kind of working back through a lot of my experiences with you I'm going to have to plead the fifth and redirect conversation to a lovely video game called Dota 2. Um, okay. We play that game occasionally, and I think from starting today, we're no longer going to be Baseless Rumors and Speculation podcast. We're going to be a Dota 2 podcast. How does that sound? I think that'll help our relationship repair itself. Okay. God, this is scary. All right. Okay. So. Yeah, me- it's, really, it's really scary thinking that, you know, it might not ever go back to the way it was, but I think we'll make it. Yeah, I'm sure that's the part I'm scared of. All right, yeah. so we have played Dota this week. How has your week in Dota been, kind sir, proud? Uh, it's been pretty good, kind sir, Sinny. Uh, I played Battle Cup, and we won some games, and then we lost the last game. Um, I played some Dota 2, and yeah, I played play some Sven. I think, I, I know I've talked about Sven a good deal in my life, but I'm pretty sure I'm getting to that point with Sven where, like, like I'm, I'm hitting, I'm hitting the lone druid pinnacle. You know, like next week we can talk about that, like how to get really good with one hero. But I've had my like, kind of. I feel like the arc. Oh man, that's just like other segment content now. But I was like, gonna say kinda, you just committed yeah. us to that segment. Yeah. Well, no, we'll, we'll do it next week. But just a little teaser. There's like this total arc of like you start getting better with the hero, and then you think you got it, and you just turn into shit out of nowhere. You're just fucking garbage, slogging through the trough with the pigs, bathing in the mud. But you still got your clothes on. Like you brought a nice suit because you think you're really good. But then you're just all muddy and everything feels terrible. And then mm-hmm. you kind of pick yourself back up and you like you learn from the pigs. You know, like you you get in their world and you learn that like you can be a fancy, strong, you know, gentleman or whatever sort of human you desire to be. Like even though you're covered in mud, and then you just you ride, you pick up your bootstraps, and you just defy gravity and rise up, and that's how I feel like Sven at this point, you know. And that's the kind of thing where like no matter what fucking happens, you know you can find a way on that hero to like, you know, to be covered in mud through the pig slaw, and you still you know, still go twelve and two or something, even though you're against like crazy good heroes. And that's how I feel like I am with Sven now. 
Okay, that's fair. Idiot. I've definitely had that. Uh, I can empathize with your, it was a very roundabout kind of weird metaphor, but it does make sense. I definitely, we always talk about like peaks and valleys in Dota, uh, both like in the actual games themselves, but as like a growing. What is your favorite peak actually? You never really told me. Favorite peak? Um, yeah. Probably Mount Everest. So basic. Yep, I know. I'm I'm a very simple person. All right, whatever. We can go on. That's not good. Um, <laughs> my, my favorite Dota power peak is probably right when you are playing Invoker and you get your Aghanims. No, and that's dude, like that's the best. no. Okay, that's you're, actually you're, not true. Actually, that's, that's not even the good power peak for Invoker. No, that's yeah, not the, the fun good part. Invoker Octarine. is like yeah. Once you get like Octarine and and like and twenty five and Ags. Yeah, yeah. Like that's that's peak fun Invoker. Like that's true. I don't, I don't really like Invoker until I've got fifty spells. Like once it's there, I'm like, this is fucking dope. Before that, it's like you know, like Wraith King has one button, Invoker's got two. Fuck you. What a shit what? hero proud what if they had a custom game in dota that when you started the game like everybody drafts their heroes or whatever you start yeah. and everybody's at like a 20 at the 25 minute mark so like you start the game and they take like ag- aggregate data of you know the average gold and net worth that each position has or each person has on a team at 25 minutes and you're yeah. you're given that so all right like you just start the game it's like all right i started as an invoker and i have twelve thousand gold to spend what do i well, do and then no one would pick a support ever yeah that's that that's mode. true well yeah. but well, somebody anyway, would have to otherwise you would pick a part. core and then have like four thousand gold because you're getting the net worth that a average person in that position would have okay so you pick your position or whatever okay that makes sense right, i'm just wondering where the if comes in because you asked me like what if and then you gave me a situation what but would you play not, it? like no i really don't <laughs> what if it too. existed just period uh <laughs> I, like would you be happy that it exists and that people could play no. it no uh All right. well i'd be happy that it existed it's like every cool mode they've added to dota 2 i was like really hype about from memories um, but the th- okay, can we like side tangent? You know what f- fucking pisses me off? Anytime people call back to like Warcraft three or or like custom games or whatever, and be like, "Wow, the resurgence of custom games!" Like Dota was born out of custom game. I wonder what's gonna get born out. You know why Dota was born out of a custom game? Because we didn't have like a bunch of readily accessible indie game engines that everyone yeah. could use. We didn't have fucking the humble bundle giving you a shit ton of games for like two dollars or whatever you want to give like there's an infinite amount of games for free now back in the day you know what you if you wanted to play something new for free you had to log on battle.net and download some random bullshit made by you know fucking bleach versus one piece tower defense or some shit like yeah. that was what you had but now like this is infinite games and they're all for free and you can just play them and they're all on your phone or all of your consoles or whatever and you can play them on both and then also like I don't know. I could keep going. Anyway, custom games is the reason they didn't take off because custom games were made in a time where there wasn't fucking 100 games for $1. Anyway, uh, yeah. let's go on. I agree completely. Why would I play Island Troll Tribes when there's a standalone that is Island Troll Tribes? Sure. Sure. Okay. Um, yeah. Oh, God, now you got me like off on yeah. like a you didn't mental state. Battle Cup, but that's fine. Did you play Battle Cup? I told you that. You don't listen to me at all. I don't listen to you at all. You're right. Yeah, I played um, two Lone Druid games and then a Slark game, and guess which one we lost? The Slark game. Yeah, I, I right. lose on Slark all the time now. I don't think Slark is good it, right now. Oh, at no, all. I don't either. It was just like one of those things where, God, the, I don't think the dude that we played, like, he didn't play mid so much as he played other core, but he was one of those dudes who's like, I can play anything. And oh. then when it came time to pick, he's like, I don't know. I don't think I don't think I can play that. And then it was just like you can only play like Queen of Pay or you can only play like PA or something. I was like, what? Yeah, that sucks. Get out of here. You gotta be honest anyway. with yourself. Yeah, and then and then I ended up like they had a fucking they had like a Sven and an OD, and I was like, I guess I'll be Slark. Like I don't fucking know. Anyway. Yeah. Every time I pick Slark, I just immediately regret it. I think yeah. I think last time I was literally streaming and I picked Slark and I just face palmed and like put my head in my hands like why did I do this to myself? Because yeah. every time I pick Slark, I just have a miserable time. Like yeah. I, it's just no game is a good Slark game these days. It's like all right, every game there's like all right, they have 600 AOE disables, they have an OD, and they have these saves, and I can't burst anybody, and they have yeah. a billion centuries. Uh, I mean, all this right. was a fine Slark game. It's just somehow Flub ended up playing Rubik offlane. <laughs> that does not sound ideal it it uh, a lot of confusion happened during a lot of parts of during the draft i will say 
Well, hopefully he got awful in farm. That is unfortunate, though. Um, I, I'm, I'm sad I missed that, uh, that Battle Cup. I still have not done a Battle Cup. Okay. It's, a, it's a dark time. That's it. All right. All right. How was uh, how, how's your week? Um, honestly, oh, I played not... King Mid, too. All right, you oh, go. yeah. How was that? So we were just... Uh, Lyrical came to cast with our in-houses, and we actually just casted yeah. a core Monkey King game, and it was really interesting yeah, it was to watch. Safe lane. Safe lane Monkey King sucks, yeah. though. Yeah, it was it was interesting to watch. Um, okay, that that's it. I yeah, well, no, How uh, did you feel on it? Uh, on and what did on you do? My Monkey King. I, I thought it was, I thought it was good. I um I did like Poor Man Shield. I think I got a wand. It was like it was like Poor Man Shield Treads, um, a bottle of course, and uh, and then I just went like Echo Saber Deso. Um, yeah, and, and I felt pretty good with it. I like stomped a lot of shit. Um, I was pretty much like 13 and two. And then I had a couple deaths at the end. That was just kind of whatever. Um, I was against a Ember spirit mid also. And I just totally crapped on him. Um, yeah, it was, it was good. It wasn't a great monkey King game either. Um, but you know, this, it was fine. Um, being against Marana does kind of suck as monkey King. I will say like throwing arrows in random places or just like I'm sitting in my ulti and then she just kind of drops an arrow somewhere in there. And I'm like, I have a very limited space to move around. And it's it's kind of weird. And then fucking do ancient apparition against Monkey King. Like I'm in my ulti. Guess where the ice blast's gonna go? <laughs> in my ulti. And then I can't jump anywhere. It was it was a very sad situation. But I mean, Monkey King's just like he just feels good. Like once you get those treads up, especially because people don't go the attack speed talent anymore. Most people get the twelve percent evasion. Um, like treads are so good on this hero. Uh, I'm like huge, huge, huge fan of of treads. I'm not entirely sure the way that y- I need to build him. Like, there's there's two items that you need to buy on him before BKB. And it's, like, some certain combination of SNY, Echo Saber, Shadow Blade, and Deso. Like, you need some combo of those items. Uh, and then a couple of them, like, don't pair together. And the safest thing is just Echo Deso because mm-hmm. your ulti is not going to get bashed. The only thing your ulti is ever going to do is, de- is, uh, is Echo. So, like, I don't know. Just go Echo Deso, call it a day. But oh, and I got a win lace too because win lace is really good. Yeah, movement speed's nice, especially on a hero that just kind of wants to punch your buns. Yeah, that that's true. I have not run up against any monking cores, um, so I'm scared of that day. Honestly, yeah, it's I'm kinda... it's, it's just good mid. Like, yeah, you think about like most like what makes a hero a good safe laner. One big thing is just like. Oh, sorry, I had to cough. They're um, the way that they deliver damage is like guaranteed that it will go off like a, a, a juggernaut with like omni slash is juggernaut like he presses r and then an amount of the farm that he has gotten like certainly has efficacy on the game but a monkey king like the way a mo- like monkey king wants to be in the middle of shit but mm-hmm. a monkey king is like kind of squishy and if a monkey king doesn't have bkb and he's in the middle of shit and he's like the same level as everyone else he just kind of dies but if you're like over leveled and you have higher capabilities than everyone else you do have the ability to just like jump on a bunch of people and then drop your q and just through pure like levels you're tanky enough to kind of survive through it um yeah. or the safe lane monkey king you just kind of like get caught out and die a bunch whenever you try to do anything because you're not actually as ahead as you would like you need to be like it's, it's a very snowbally thing like most mids are but yeah it's good oh also you get the the orb of venom really early like I've got like I had poor mid shields, uh, branch fairy fire, and then I got shipped out to me like the healing salve, of course, and then right after that I got orb of venom and then boots of speed and then my bottle after. So I just like tried at, at two minutes I had boots, orb of venom, uh, and poor man shield on a monkey king, and I just like kept punching buns and was super good. God, that sounds miserable to play against. Actually, yeah, it totally was, especially for an ember spirit. He's like, I'm gonna block all the magic damage. I'm just, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just gonna punch you, dude. Like, I don't have yeah. a lot of interest in subterfuge. There's just there's a stick, and then there's your jaw, and it's just they're interacting. Yeah, that that. Oh god, what a terrible it, matchup. It was it, yeah, it was a very bad matchup for them, and a very fun time for me. Yeah, sounds like it. Um, yeah, so you're allowed to talk now. Yeah, I'm I'm down to do that. So I. Let's see. I I feel like I've talked about the same things uh, in the last like three podcasts I've recorded, and that like the games I've played recently, I've played Winter Wyvern. I had a yeah. miserable Legion Commander mid game. I played Sounds a Shadow Demon game. Common. Um, yeah, Legion Commander. It was like an all right game, and then God, what happened in She's this game? Mid, actually, man. She's just not a mid. Yeah. Oh, see, what happened was I played it and it was a good game, but then they had an ancient apparition that just massacred us. Like this ancient yeah. apparition never missed an ult in his entire life. I'm pretty sure. 
and we just got brutalized. Also, the, our big problem was that they had a safe lane Slark that free farmed, and we had a safe lane Alchemist that was five and fourteen. Mm, um, that seemed seemed to be an issue. Yeah, it was one of those things. He was like, it was a really nice guy, but he was just, uh, he was like, oh, uh, you know, it's my daily daily challenge. And I was like, all right, okay, I guess. Like, good luck to you. And he tried to do the fighting build where you go like armlet, which again, armlet against an ancient apparition, bad bad idea. Yeah, when you're already an alchemist. But he went armlet, solar crest, radiance with like phase boots, and I was like, oh, you're playing the harder to play alchemist, and in a game where you first picked, and you're not good, and it was just like a real sad experience for that individual. Yeah, that's, uh, that's like a, a negative kind of situation, and then you have this like legion mid that's incapable of doing anything. It seems like oh, I mean, that I, game for sure. I I I was quite effective, um, but I was thirteen and six with two hundred sixty-two okay. dual damage. There you go. Um, but it was definitely like I didn't want to pick anything else in my hero pool for mid because of yeah. the heroes that they had, and I was like, all right, I have to play against an a uh, an invoker. I don't want to counter pick with a PA because I don't pay freaking PA versus Slark and Puck. And I would rather just like play Legion. I brutalize this guy in mid. It's a really easy matchup. And I like solo killed him twice and it was a good time. But then we just had like a bunch of fights go wrong. Oh man, our Earth Checker is 1 in 20 also. Yeah, it was not a good game. Um, okay. So that happened. And I played a couple Winter Wyvern games as we talked about last week. I tried playing Shadow Demon again because he. We talked about him a lot actually when he had all those buffs, right? Remember last patch? Or last couple yeah. patches actually. And it felt good. We ended up losing this game pretty miserably uh, just because the enemy team's comp was like really good and ours was really, really horrifically bad. Mm-hmm. But the Shadow Demon itself felt really good. I really like this yeah. hero and I look forward to playing him more. Uh, maybe maybe next week actually. actually new, we'll I just won a them. game with a Shadow Demon on my team, and they, yeah, they did twenty. They did as much damage as our as Sand King did. That's actually pretty impressive, to be truthful. Yeah, it's really nice. Just you can play him so many different ways, right? You can play like more of a sieging, like initiation, counter initiation, counter initiation thing with uh, yeah. with disruption, or you can play like a damage booster. Or like I was playing in this game, we had an Invoker and a PA and a Lion on my team. So I would just get my what's called soul assumption. No, that's not the that's not the uh, thing. Soul catcher, soul catcher on them, and they would just take like a billion damage all at once. Um, yeah. that was really cool. And you can play like more of a like stacking support zoning thing if you go shadow poison. It's very yeah. fun to play here that has that much versatility. But it was just a bad game for it. But I will be playing a lot more shadow demon. Um, yeah, he seems cool. That's about it. I uh, I'll be honest with all everybody that I reinstalled WoW and I've been playing a lot of WoW, so that's distracted from my Dota time. And uh, I've everybody needs breaks from Dota sometimes, right? And yep. so I'm taking my short uh, diversion. More importantly, I've been playing on a Burning Crusade private server because yeah. I'm stressed out, and that's my happy place. So and that's know. yeah. I mean, Proud and I were just talking about this, but proud got me to play on his tbc server and our nostalgic uh eras of wow are very different in that like i played wrath of the lich king and mists and uh cataclysm primarily as like my big serious wow time whereas proud was a like vanilla and tbc player so yeah, dude, i played on that got me into esports yeah PC and- was the best yeah, and and so me then going on that server, I just like it reminds me of all the fun I have on like my main account with my mounts yeah. and my collectibles, and everybody knows me like I'm a glutton for cosmetics, yeah, and like transmogrifying and all these fun things. So I ended up buying Legion and reinstalling WoW, so I'm having fun with that. But anyway, we're not a WoW podcast, so I won't drone on. Um, but that did distract from my my uh, ability to play a bunch of games of Dota this week. So I only Dota played like too. a half dozen. Anyway, I'm sure I'll be back in the saddle, give it another week. So let's just let's just get right into it, shall we? So a few months ago, we did an episode that a lot of people gave us good feedback on where we just, instead of lining out a combo beforehand, we decided to instead play a game before the recording and then counter and then just play a game and then talk about why we chose the heroes we did and analyze the drafts from both sides because... As much as we've done a few segments and a few specials, uh, special episodes where we've talked about drafting in more detail and all that, 
it is, you know, a lot of times our segments are about a very specific aspect of Dota or the mentality. And then our combo is a very specific, like, oh, we're playing, you know, Winter Wyvern and Chaos Knight. They have these synergies. You play this here, this way, this here, that way. So we wanted to go back and do another one of these counterpicking kind of reactionary choice and how you approach the draft in pub games type things. So that's what we did. Um, and that's why we did it. And it was a lot of fun. I mean, it was a really good game. Um, I think we've... I think it was. Uh, I don't. I don't even want to make generalizations. I think we can just start going over, shall we? Oh, okay. All right. Uh, so we had first pick. We were playing on the radiant team. This was a game uh, where each team had a two stack and then three solo players. And I think the average was in that like forty seven hundred range. Um, yeah. I was the highest MR on our team because my party averages like forty seven seventy five or something. And the enemy team had a fifty one hundred player that was in solo, and. We had first pick. We had a first pick CM from one of our teammates. And that, I think, CM, there's not a ton to talk about with CM in that. CM first pick is, I would say, one of the most open-ended support first picks. Like, yeah. maybe, wh- what do you think? Like, CM, Rubik. Uh, personally, I pick Winter Wyvern first pick, but that's, again, not, like, a common kosher first pick yeah. by a lot yeah, of no, people's CM is pretty, is pretty, like, first pickable. Um, I mean, she's just, like, good in general, and she doesn't go with anything in particular, and she doesn't have any super specific hero, like, synergies, but she does have uh-huh. a bit more specific hero counters. Like, if you have a, a CM who is your five and then you have a roamer who is your four. Like if you get a good off laner, that's actually like very decent at pressuring. Um, or if you have a care or if you have a carry that, or rather if they have a carry that, um, that doesn't respond well to pressure, then you can just make sure the CM never gets to take advantage of her jungling abilities by just pressuring the like CM plus carry lane with their roaming four. Yeah. Also another, another big thing thinking forward in the draft, having a CM on your team is that it enables us to pick some heroes that we may have otherwise been uncomfortable with, or it, I mean, and it also allows us to do some builds that we might otherwise not do. Um, so if you're playing, for instance, I ended up picking pretty soon after this, I picked Juggernaut and Juggernaut CM is some obvious synergy between, you know, the ability to kill offlaners but the big thing is just that jug is a mana starved hero and having a cm on my team set makes me think to myself all right i'm not gonna be needing to ferry out a clarity every five minutes i'm not gonna be uh terribly um i'm not gonna be too concerned about wasting mana or spending mana and so that in my mind as a player drafting i was like all right this enables me to pick this whereas if he had picked rubik i may have picked a different carry in that situation uh, probably not, just because Juggernaut's real good. Yeah, but. Oh, I, I will say about, I mean, the Juggernaut thing, like, C- CM, she doesn't have, it's, maybe, she has some obvious synergies, but it's more that just, like, there are so many of them that's so open-ended, yeah. but in terms of her counters, like, she is a five that has no ability that can't be broken out with either a Manta or, like, a yes. skill such as Rage or, um, you know, Slark Stark Pact or uh, Juggernaut Spin and all those. So, like, when I'm against a CM, I just, I'm like, all right, I'm either going to play Juggernaut or, or Lifestealer. And Lifestealer just kind of sucks. So, I'm just, I'm going to play Juggernaut and their five just has, like, nothing that they can do to me. Um, so, the fact that you get the Juggernaut, like, and, and the CM means if they do want to have a hero that's just going to completely ignore CM, it's going to be like a Lifestealer. And then, like, sick, we got them to pick Lifestealer. Yeah, great. Yeah. Also, another big thing when I'm drafting against a CM, you know, like obviously because they had the next pick, if you're picking an offlaner, CM does like 36 damage, right? She is right. like arguably, let's see, is there any support that's worse at zoning than CM? I don't think so, right? Um, she's definitely up there if there's any, yeah. yeah, maybe somebody's worse, but she sucks at zoning. Like she either has to commit a ton of mana to do it. Like, yeah, she has okay kill potential, but she has to either commit a ton of mana to zone, or she has to slap them around, which she does, again, like, negligible damage. Like, yeah. if you have a poor man's shield, she's literally doing nothing half the time. She's worse than a creep. Well, I mean, yeah. not literally doing nothing. Gonna, yeah, well, I'm yes, you're right. Cut that um, one out right there. But um, yeah, she is worse yeah. than a creep. And that's, that's what I'm saying with, like, you know, every hero is balanced to a point. Like, every like bonus that they have is balanced out with you know some shitty weakness and like oh cm can jungle that's balanced out with oh cm like has a lot of issues that are solved by her jungling so if you're able to pressure their safe laner and cm can't jungle like if you're not taking advantage of a hero's like benefit or a hero's pluses i guess you're only going to be reaping their minuses 
Yeah, so exactly. Like, so that's that's another reason why Juggernaut is great. Like, not only is it a good counter to her that you're taking away from them, not only is he synergized with the mana, but he's also a fairly self-sufficient carry, especially with the mana fueled. Like, you get, you know, maybe one extra blade spin, one extra healing ward in the lane or something like that. Like, yeah. you can pretty much solo with that hero if you've got, you know, a team that's going to throw a spell once in a while. Yeah, and so the Dire team, their reactionary pick, having us be, having us had... Jesus Christ, that's not how the English language works. Um, having us Indeed. first picked... CM, I'm just going to move on from that horrible sentence structure. They they first picked Wind Ranger on their team. Um, so this was a Wind Ranger off lane, which there was a big Reddit thread about this CIS player that was playing a lot of off lane Wind Ranger that like you know cre- or induced a lot of other players to be picking a lot more uh, Wind Ranger off lane. I know I personally have not felt very strongly about Wind Ranger, despite I really like the hero, but I've felt that the yeah. hero is in like a very weird place right now. I know D2 Bowie was tweeting about it and you were talking to him about it the other day. Um, so immediately seeing this, I was just kind of thrown off because like I don't know what the heck this is going to be, right? Wind Ranger is very yeah. open ended, where it's like it could I, be mid. I, I was thinking of playing the Monkey King mid again, but yeah, I was like, I don't want to play that against Wind Ranger. It sounds awful. Yeah. So I was like, I don't know. It greatly influenced what I wanted to pick mid and it ended up being an offlaner, which is, you know, like that's that's cool for them. Yeah. And so this Wind Ranger offlane actually got a lot out of the lane, partially because the other support player that we won't disclose their hero because, you know, it, it's it's fun to hide things Rich was not bad. great. Um, He did not. He was clearly not a support player. I'll say that much. Um, And so he did not manage uh equilibrium super well and we ended up getting a couple kills on the wit on the wind ranger just because you know we fought well and all that but it was the wind ranger got way more than she should have and in a large part that is because she picked it against the cm right and the cm was in- completely incapable of zoning the wind ranger and wind ranger had quick boots which meant that our kill potential was pretty negligible on her yeah uh, we uh we eventually killed her once we also had boots but she very quickly, you know, reaped the rewards of having a weak safe lane um, or weak safe lane supports. She just slapped me around because she's fast and does decent damage. I think she started with a null and I think she has like 63 damage with a null, something like that. Yeah, so, she she's very strong with a null. Like it's pretty yeah. brutal, honestly. And she had a lot of farm because of it and ended up doing fairly well in this game. And it was in large part just because of that CM pick, I would honestly say, where even if we had picked a four, like a more like a traditional four that's good at killing people or harassing or whatever, still, you know, that four would have either had to commit a ton of time to my lane to deal with those Wind Ranger or this Wind Ranger was just going to get things. So it was a very good pick in reaction to the CM, whether that was intentional or not, of course, we don't know. But yeah. it was very effective in that sense. Um, yeah, not only was it good against almost anything that you put, like, any, almost, no carry really does well against a Wind Ranger 1v1 besides, like, I don't know, clinks or something, right? Like, yeah. Range, she's fast. So that's pretty good against most melee carries, which is kind of what people are playing. Yeah. And so she's good against most of the carries. She's going to be good against the CM for certain. Um, and then also it made me, like, second guess a lot of what I wanted to do mid. So, I mean, I... I like, I'm not a big fan of Wind Ranger offlane, but if it was a viable thing, then this would have been, like, actually a very good usage of it. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so then our next pick, like we've been talking about, was Juggernaut. Um, that was, in large part, just because nobody on our team was picking, and I knew we had the CM, and I knew I didn't want to play something super... I, like, I saw the Wind Ranger, and I was like, right, if this is an offlane, is there any hero I really don't want to play against this, and is there any hero I really do want to play against this? And I picked Juggernaut in large part just because I knew if it is a core Wind Ranger that's mid, she will be buying Orchid at some point in the game. So I want to have a Manta builder. And also really? I want to have... I haven't seen a Wind Ranger build an Orchid in a long ass time, dude. Well, no, I guess I have, but they're just always bad. I feel like every time I've seen a Wind Ranger with an Orchid, I'm like, oh, we win. They're stupid. Dude, Bloodthorn's legit on Wind yeah, Ranger. Yeah, but not like, you don't go Orchid first. Uh, you, know, you don't go Orchid good, first. But... No, definitely not. But I mean, you still honestly, buy it eventually. Yeah, um, I guess so. I don't know. I, I guess when my my experience with Rin, Rin, Wind Ranger was way more like during the Daedalus phase. Yeah, that's true. Daedalus um, is great. Um, and yeah, go on. also, I wanted to have Blade Fury or Rage or something like that to dodge if I see her shackle shot coming at me, or just so that people can't be shackled to me. 
So I so Juggernaut fit those categories, and again, Juggernaut's a very safe pick as a hero. Where there, it's very rare that Juggernaut's just like a bad hero. Yeah, right. It's not like I'm first picking or second picking an AM. Where it's like, all right, AM could be bad, could be good. Who knows? It's a crapshoot. Yeah, we um, uh, we picked Juggernaut last time we did this, and we were against a Crystal Maiden, or at least I picked it. And I was like, hey, Chuck's good against CM, so we picked it. Now we have CM, and we we picked it. Yeah, Chuck's good very content, catch all. Um, all right, yeah. well, I mean, <laughs> you brought that up, not me. But Jug was perfect because we. I mean, I assume in that game also you had to pick early, and if you're picking early, you don't want to commit to some yeah. weird niche carry. You, know you want to pick something generalist. There's like this fucking meme that's like, it's like a TED talk or something, and this woman's in front of a screen. And she's like, "This is a classic gaming emotion or whatever." You know what I'm talking about? No, that sounds oh like a horrible TED talk. Oh my god, are you talk. kidding me? Dude, this like is a you, classic gaming on, emotion. Yeah, you're on. Tw- yeah, you're on Twitter. Like, and then people just like Photoshop a bunch of shit into the picture, and it's like. Fucking I'm not like, on the same Twitter that you are, all right? I'm on buddy. freaking K-pop Twitter. I got right. hardcore... Never, I'm so good at, like... Uh, and I'm good, but I'm so knowledgeable about, like, girl group memes. And that's okay. about it. All right, no, there's I K-pop won't, I won't memes in general. Over, but there's just, like... It's like when, when you know that you're, like, the highest MMR and, like, you're hovering over a core and then you just see, like, the gold start ticking down and there's someone that's moused over a support that's just not picking for no reason, like, that's a classic Dota emotion. And that's how we ended up with Jug second second pick yeah so we won't go too deeply into that um I, although i suppose we'll talk about itemization later but yeah that, that jug's a simple nice pick because we were i was first forced to per- pick early and i because you know i didn't want our yeah. whole team to be losing gold so they responded with a disruptor pick which i would say was a bad pick here would you agree like given yeah, the information he had shitty against jug yeah, Disorder's bad against Jug and mediocre against Crystal Maiden. And I feel like Jug, uh, I feel like Disruptor, whenever I pick Disruptor, which is not that much recently, honestly. I used to play a ton of him. I still have like 80-something games on him. Um, I pick him as a counterpick to things like Slark or Storm Spirit. Yeah. I don't... So in those situations, I'm picking him late in the draft, right? I wouldn't really second pick a Disruptor, especially not against a hero that I know he's bad against. So this was, I would say, definitely like, I would say it's the worst pick of the entire draft. Uh, looking at the ten yeah, euros, I I'd, I'd agree. It was just kind of like, I don't know. And this was one of the people in the party, so maybe they're like by far the lowest MMR in the game. I don't know. Is that visible? It's not visible, but it was just bizarre and out yeah, of left field. Like, yeah, I um, I do kind of like it against CM just because you can be like literally anywhere and interrupt your ulti. Yeah, which is kind of cool, fair. but beyond beyond that, yeah, I, I agree. It's not that great. Um, that I do I do run into a number of situations. This is a lot more common on Life Stealer than Juggernaut, but um, you like end up using your spin to like get out of the fight, um, mm-hmm. and then as soon as you're like quote unquote out of the fight, as an out of range of you know most traditional spells, yeah. you get glimpsed, and you're like, ah, I sh- uh, yeah. forgot about that one. With That's with Life Stealer, it sucks because you know you use your rage for the fight. And then as soon as the fight is like nearing an end, your range your rage pops out, and then you get glimpsed. You're like, ah, that's too bad. My hero isn't as good as I hoped it was. But I mean, for for Jug, like you pretty much, like yeah, that that situation can arise. But either way, you're better off than any other hero in that regard. Yeah, like that's exactly. that's not even an option that other heroes have. So it's still like still good stuff. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, there were a few times. I think what I had a couple deaths in this game, and a lot of, or at least one of them was just because yeah. I got caught in like a static storm and all that, and I didn't go BKB because I had so many other things. Also, I yeah. kept trying to do the fancy thing. I've only, I've done it a few times. I kept trying to be fancy and Manta out of kinetic field, yeah. but I never yeah, managed I, I to do it this you game. Miss that every so often, and I'm just like, that's kind of why I'm a better Juggernaut player than you, I think, because I have about yeah. 98 percent hit rate on Manting off. Um, uh, glimpse, but that's well, just like oh, I mean, I, you'll, you'll get it eventually. I wasn't even bothering with glimpse. I don't think I'm that god oh, tier player. To manta? You can manta through kinetic field. Oh, okay, yeah. Also, yeah, I just I've noticed you make a lot of mistakes, so it's, it's yeah. hard to keep track of them all. Yeah, you can manta through kinetic field, but there is an RNG aspect to it because you don't know which placement of the illusions you're going to be. Yeah, and I mean, it's like a one in three chance that it'll go off or something, or that. Yeah, it'll also. Or also, you have to time it right, because if you are running against the wall, 
it will not work. But if you're running into the wall before you're stopped, it it can it has that chance to work. In my oh, experience, really? doing I, I didn't it. Know that. I'm pretty sure that's an aspect of it because whenever I have gotten out of kinetic field with it, it has been while I'm running into it, like the second or the, uh, you know, the uh-huh. millisecond, whatever, tenth of a second where I hit the wall, I'm doing it. But if I'm like in this game, for instance, every time I did it, I was just standing against the wall and then it wasn't working um, because it was putting yeah. not even putting a single illusion outside of the wall. So I think there is an element of placement to, yeah, to it. I, I know where for like, things like like slark slark pounce, you can just run to the end of it until you're you know like running on a treadmill, and then you just pop yeah. it and you might get out of it. Uh, but yeah, stuff like like glimpse, you have to, I guess I'm pretty sure you're right about that. And then also like puck stream coil, you have to walk to like the exact yes. edge, but not break it, and then manta and like that's I've done that too. It's, I've done that once or twice successfully, and many many times not successfully. <laughs> Yeah, but it's one of those things like you just got to try it because you're like, man, if this works out, it's gonna be the coolest thing. Yeah. Um. All right. So yeah, disruptor is not not a great pick in this game. Um. So far, and continues to be a pretty bad pick as the draft continues. So our next pick was Witch Doctor. Um. Proud and I were talking about this. I think it might be on the VOD. I'm not sure about how a lot of times you'll get two fives on a team because we were talking about how four has developed uh, through the patches and into its newest iterations. And we, or at least my, I myself, have been seeing a lot of teams, both my own teams and, and other teams, picking two fives, and then one just gets farm and one doesn't. Something like that. So our team had this exact situation, right? We had a CM first pick, and then the third pick ended up being a Witch Doctor. And uh, what do you think about this as like a trio of heroes early on in the draft uh having um, crystal maiden and juggernaut and witch doctor yeah i mean i think it's just super exploitable um we have the crystal maiden who is crowd control that you can kind of get out of any way you want um you have the witch doctor who doesn't have any disable and you can tell me he has disable but i'm gonna tell you that you're wrong because when i say we need disable I don't mean we need someone to stop moving for a second and then have the option to do literally anything they fucking want. And then if they decide to not do anything, then they'll get stunned for a second again. Like, that's not a disable. That's a, it's like an annoyance that can be good, but it's like, like, you're not going to so look like you're not going to fucking blink cask and anti-mage and then you catch that. Like, that's not going to happen. Uh, so the fact that, kind of like our entire thing would be countered by just like a bkb or you know like a manta blink or something like that was kind of scary and then also we had literally zero heft between our two heroes like yeah. witch doctor has a little bit of heft to him but i mean not really like how do you really gank with those like either your like your cm is kind of the initiation is like the range on cask and then cm like puts a frost bite in and that's like like that's it's not really a, like a guaranteed way to gank mid and that's after you get two spells off that are kind of hard to like get in range for so i mean i, I kind of hate it um i feel like any f- support duo that doesn't have like a tanky melee boy i don't i don't really want it you know like i'm not yeah I'm not desiring it or even like a tanky range support like a lich or a jakiro like these no. two supports i mean um, i agree with I mean, you in general sucks. no dude, I mean, jakiro's, jakiro's great good, but as a five not a Four. Yeah. Fuck. Uh, I mean, you're right, but in this situation where you're picking two fives, anyway, I'm I'm not disagreeing yeah. with you. I'm just saying, you know, you want to have something that you. isn't gonna die instantly to a storm spirit if they had yeah, like that. You need like, you know, people say like, oh man, I hate when people say you need a tank, but like, fuck you, like you need someone who can take a hit. You need yeah. that. It's like Dota Two is a game about trading barrages of spells, and the teams whose barrage of spells hit like the correct targets in a most efficient manner wins. Like that's how engagements work that's how the tempo of every fight works out and if you fall over no matter what combination of targets of spells they throw out then you're gonna lose every fight like you just are but if you have like an ogre magi or a sand king or someone who like takes a bunch of spells and then is able to like get out and then re-engage with you know like a fucking like a fissure from the sidelines or something afterwards like all right you ate three spells they got no kills but if your dude's a fucking cm like oh you ate one spell and they got a kill like that's not a good situation to be in. Get tanky boys. Tanky boys are great. Yeah, absolutely. And as much as, I mean, we did win this game. Like, as much as it did work out, I would have been very happy to have either of these heroes on my team, but either one could have been changed out for a legitimate four that yeah. could have roamed and did more things, whereas 
we kind of had action come towards us in the game, which was nice and had led them to be good reactionary. The yeah. enemy team didn't have like a burst hero, but very easily the enemy team could have picked something like like if I see a witch doctor and a CM, a there's no variability in those heroes. Like we know they're both supports. There's no situation where it's like oh they picked Wind Ranger and CM. Like okay, there's a potential that Wind Ranger could be yeah. a support, which is rare but not uncommon. It could be an offlaner, could be a mid. Even just you know like a Sand King or an Earthshaker, like could be a four, yeah. could be a three. Exactly. Whereas when you're picking Witch Doctor and CM, it's like, okay, we know exactly what their support duo is. We know their weaknesses. Yeah. We know they're going to have no secure stuns, basically, if we have any degree of way to dodge things. Like, again, yep. Spe- uh, Storm Spirit would have wrecked this game. Like, if the enemy team had picked Storm Spirit, we would have had a real hard time. Yeah, I mean, um, CM can actually freeze Storm now. But yeah, yes. like if he gets a Yules or literally any item in the game, then no longer. Yeah, exactly. So that's like a big concern of mine when I have my first two supports picked in the first few picks. And on top of that, they're both fives or they're both fours. If you have two fours, it's also awkward in a lot of these times. So that was a concern of mine. Uh, How do you think Witch Doctor does picking wise against uh, these two first two heroes, Wind Ranger and Disruptor? Personally, Um, yeah. No, it's, you know, you you pose the question, but you're right. You're right. You're You're right. You're allowed to do it. You should go on now. It's your turn. I realize the folly of my ways. Please answer okay. first, bro. Well, I mean, I was actually being serious, but yeah. Um, so I think that it sucks, personally. Um, you know what's really cool about... Wait, shit, does Witch Doctor's ulti have True Strike now? It does. Does it? I don't know. I think, I'm think i pretty sure it does. I feel like that's a patch change that I read, but instantly forgot about. I'm gonna... I gotta check this. Yeah, that's what I'm also looking for. Because if it does, then obviously it's fine against Wind Ranger. But if it doesn't... The ward can miss. The ward can miss. What did I... Did I dream... I've been having so many issues where I just, like, dream very generic things that very easily could have happened. And I just don't really know what's going on in my waking life anymore. So like, the... Sorry. The no, bounces... Go on. The bounces have true strike if you have Aghanim Scepter. But if you do not have Aghanim Scepter, uh, even if you do, the primary target, it, it can miss. Okay, the bounces have have, uh, have True, True strike. strike. Okay, I think that's what changed. Anyway. Yeah, I'm honestly um, not sure. Um, yeah. But okay, regardless. Anyway, point being, yeah, I don't really think it's it's that great. Yeah, no, Aghanim Scepter now grants True Strike to Death Ward. Yeah, that was a 706 change. I have such a fantastic memory about completely relevant heroes. I'm so good at this. This is why I'm on the show. Uh, yeah, so I, I think it was, it's not that great because, like, that's kind of a pipe dream. Um, and yeah. Wind Ranger just kind of operates at a farther away range than every other person that could considerably be, that could considerably be offlane. Um, so the, the chance of getting a Maledict on her is near zero. Um, and, like, yeah, I don't know, like, Wind Ranger also is a hero that has a defensive ability built into her and... and like, if you cask, she's gonna get her wind run off at some point. So, like, you can't cask Maledict ulti. Like, you just can't do that. Because somewhere in between the bounces, she's gonna find the ability to take her finger, and, you know, press the E button, and then, whoa, she can't get hit by shit anymore. Maledict doesn't do anything. Nothing does anything. You know, sad life. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that it wasn't good. Um, also, again, like, that's another person that Disruptor's Glimpse is actually, like, a really strong interrupt against. Like, Witch Doctor yeah. wants to be in outer space and drop his ulti, you know, like, across a cliff or something, and then, you know, it spits out its little purple fairy sludge at everybody in the club, but then you've got a, like, Disruptor who's also in outer space, but on, like, in, like, a different galaxy, and then he glimpses Disruptor, glimpses Witch Doctor back, like, onto Earth, and then Witch Doctor dies. Yeah, well, also, one of the nice things playing Disruptor against Witch Doctor is that if the Witch Doctor is, you know, let's say he's oh, ulting... or whatever? Yeah. Yeah, like, Glimmer Caped, you don't care. Like, just ult him. Who cares? Um, Let's put it on top. Yeah, At so worst, this... you're just trading ulti for ulti, right? Like, yeah, it's exactly. good stuff. So, yeah, thoroughly, not a big fan of the Witch Doctor pick. Also, exa- exactly like you said, going, laning, laning our tri lane against this Wind Ranger. The Wind Ranger, we would throw Cask, she would wind run, and the Cask would hit her, like, a mile away. So it was just very yeah, not great. Like, I want, a, like, secure stuns from at least one of my supports. I want simple things, um, and we did not have that. 
And it's, so, it's also worth noting, like, we had picked our entire tri lane by then. So if they were deciding whether or not they wanted R- Windrunner to be the off lane, like, they had all the information they needed to be like, well, we'll put another off laner there if, if Windrunner gets a good mid matchup. Or we'll, like, you know, keep Windrunner there because that's a fine, you know, she's fine against their tri lane um, if they pick something that's not, like, a good matchup for, for Windrunner. Yeah. So, like, it was pretty much perfect information about what they wanted to do about hours off lane and our mid like they yeah like they, they had they had perfect information about how to counter two lanes three picks in which is not a good p- place to be in absolutely so their next pick was winter wyvern uh so obviously i'm a big fan of this hero i picking into this team comp i think this is a pretty like with the information we have again saying these three heroes this is a decent winter wyvern game um to a good winter bomber game it's not like a excellent game because there's no like direct counter i would say but i do like playing wyvern against uh juggernaut because he, she has a bkb piercing stun which is nice if like for example one death i had i was trying to bk i was just blade furying and tping and she just ulted me so i died yeah um, and also, you have multiple supports that are very killable, although you generally are not trying to kill your supports with Wyvern ults, but it is definitely an option you want to have and uh, to have the capability to do. Just be like, oh, that's CM, yeah, she's dead now. Um, yeah. Also, Witch Doctor comps and Juggernaut comps are very commonly, these heroes are very commonly picked into strats that are just going to run at people, right? You're going to push towers, push towers, push towers. Yeah, yeah, and the double healing heroes. Exactly. And Wyvern is super good. Wyvern is super good because you just throw splinter blasts at them repeatedly. You can use like tons of them as long as you have mana boots. You can use tons of them and just toss them, toss them, toss them. We yeah. did not at this point have any way to engage her from afar. Like she engage or she defends from far away compared to some heroes that need to get more up close and personal with creeps. So Wyvern is great against that. I'm gonna say Wyvern and Wyvern interchangeably because I'm yeah. I'm an imperfect human being and I cannot fix my my. Yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, everyone foibles. knows it's Wyvern, but I feel like, is it? Did I infect you to say Wyvern because it's just fun to be wrong about things? I hear other people say Wyvern. Okay, but that's fucked up. Yeah, I mean, it's wrong. But isn't that like a D and D thing that Wyvern no, is like in D and D or Wyvern is not. in something? It's not. People are just wrong about things. Okay. Um. Anyway, I'll fucking so kill him. So I actually like this as a Winter Wyvern pick, but I again, I do not think it was stellar. Uh, also, they have this similar problem that we have where they have two fives. Like, Winter Wyvern can be played as a four in the sense that you can farm her, but she cannot be played as a four in... Actually, that's a lie. You can you can roam and gank with Winter Wyvern. You just need the right mid to do it with. Yeah, um, but she's, she's like... Okay, it's not what, ideal. What? She's not. She's never going to be a Sand King or a Night Stalker. Yeah, like, exactly. The things exactly. that those heroes do to games are extremely different from what Dragon Mom does to games. Yeah. Also, another key flaw that they have on their team comp is if we gank their mid laner, who we don't know who it is yet, they have no ability to react to it and save them immediately. Um, in a lot of like, they don't have a stun. Like very simply put, yeah. they don't have like a Rubik or a Lion that can be like, oh, you're diving my mid. Stop that. Hex, yeah, or Earth stun. Shaker, you know, whatever. Like, they have the heal from Winter Wyvern, but A, that's not applicable in certain matchups. Like, that's not going to do anything if it's like a quap or something killing your mid. Yeah. And B, you don't get that until like level four, usually, um, maybe level three. Um, yeah. So you don't have anybody to react if we're ganking your mid laner, which, to be fair, we had already shown our tri lane, and we know that, or they know that we're not going to be ganking their mid. So that's kind of a moot point, I suppose. We could have, though, just saying. Throughout the entire right. laning phase, it would have been a very yeah. easy way to... Easy, so, easy kill, yeah. but anyway. Somehow, yeah. I was point alone. Stance. I was either alone or had, like, supports just, like, like dicking around in the forest. But, like, I don't know what they did. Like, CM was, like, level two at, like, yeah. five minutes. Yeah, and so I was like, you've been jungling like, this whole time. Like, what can you pull? You? And he's like, oh, I'm getting mana aura. And I was like, it's four minutes in. Like, what are you... What? God. Surely you have figured out where the creep camp is at this point in your MMR climb. It was just baffling. I was like, I get that, like, I'm left alone. Like, maybe you guys have other priorities, but, like, nothing was being done. You were calling for ganks mid. I was calling for any degree of help safe lane. And then they were just like, yeah, we're, we're busy. Like, stealing runes. Rune. Oh, God. Okay. I need, um, I need that banner rune. Anyways, let's keep going. 
Yeah, let's keep going. So you're you picked next. You picked Arc Warden in the mid lane. Uh, this is her we haven't played yeah. on on Theorycraft and Thursday in a while, uh, or Theorycraft Thursday rather. Right. Um, and I know you were a bit on the fence about this pick. Sure. Yeah. So this is a bad pick, um, and it was also not good. Uh, so we have two. We have two two fives, which means we have a heft deficit. And then we have a jug, which is not a heft. Jug is not, like, if you think of what is heft, juggernaut is not, like, if you open up the dictionary, it's not juggernaut there. Like, maybe Sven, if you want to talk about masked swordsman, Sven might be there, but juggernaut is not. Um, and n- neither is Arc Warden. I mean, he's not a masked swordsman, but he's also not in that category. Uh, and Arc Warden is, as we've, as I've said every time I talk about Arc Warden, he's a very, very zoning-based hero. Literally every single one of his spells... Well, all the spells besides his ulti have something to do with proximity and zoning. Like, one puts down a, a proximity mine. The other one is a disable that, like, slows and deals damage if enemies aren't near each other. And then another one is, like, a bubble of evasion and attack speed. Like, it's literally just fucking zones. Like, he's, just, he's about zones. And the way that you, like, solidify having zones is you say, all right, if you walk into this place, you're going to fucking die. But if your whole team blows over to a strong wind, there's nothing to stop them from sitting outside of your zone and then, you know, turning a fan on. And then your fucking CM, Witch Doctor, Juggernaut, and Arc Warden all, like, blow away outside of your zones. And then you fucking die. Or someone just, like, blinks in and kills you. Or if you're all hanging out in the little bunker Arc Warden made you, getting a bunch of bonus attack speed from a bubble, guess what? Winter Wyvern presses R and clicks on literally anyone, and we all kill each other with fucking double attack speed because Winter Wyvern gives you attack speed too. It's a fucking disaster. I make a clone of myself. Do you know what my clone does? It turns into fucking... I don't know, what's the thing where clones kill each other? Really, really, any media where there's a bunch of clones, they lose track of each other, and then they fight over who's the original? Like, that's what yeah. happens when Winter Wyvern comes into the game. Like, my clone is like, you know, I'm the true self, and then it's just a super bizarre kind of situation. Um, but yeah, so it was actually a really bad Winter Wyvern game, or Arc Warden game, and I was, but I also didn't really want to go up against a Wind Ranger. Like, Lone Druid sucks against Wind Ranger. I didn't want to play Quap of Pain. I didn't want to play Dragon Knight because he's just not good in this kind of pub. Um, although Dragon, like Dragon Knight, is a pretty good mid to have when you have two fives because he's like he's a tanky mid. He helps you push, which is kind of what you want to do if you have two fives. Um, he's got like an instant cast stun, which is good if you have two fives. Like these two dudes didn't have stuns. Like D- Dragon Knight would have been kind of decent, but I didn't want to play Dra- Dragon Knight against Wind Ranger. Like that that could be a very terrible situation. Yeah. Um, and so like I did that thing that you do when you're in a weird situation it kind of sucks and you're like i'm just gonna pick something that might just totally fuck them up you know just, just fuck them up and I, I went with the arc warden uh because that dude is he's just fucking weird and he does a bunch of dopey shit and then maybe they just won't be able to react to it like there's just too much crazy shit to react to sometimes when you got an arc warden so i just kind of prayed that i would hit like a peak or a spike or something and just go buck stoop and kill everyone yeah also when we talked about you know all our three heroes that we already have picked we have solid five man potential and even though we did say winter wyvern and i'm like checking myself and we did say winter wyvern is good against that arc warden is very good at accentuating our ability to five man and our ability to just push down towers or a four man for that matter um so it was an interesting pick even even if like you said it was not an ideal pick by any means it did obviously it worked out and it was interesting in the sense that yeah it had a lot of benefits in our siege there's something to like yeah an enemy team may counter you but the fact of the matter is if you if you get ahead um or if you're just like doing well or if you win a fight or some you know nebulous advantage like that um Mm -hmm. your own personal synergy with your team matters can matter at least a lot more than their ability to counter you right yeah like yes wyvern is you know has these abilities that can fuck me up but i got tanky enough to the point or i got you know itemized enough and we had crystal maiden give me mana and shit that i could just place a bunch of proximity mines and which have an absurd range and i would just kind of keep track of where Wy- uh, wyvern is all the time and when i summon my double i would only be like sieging with my double and then my double went out I did me. So like we we basically the, the idea was that I would just try to get ahead enough that I could completely play play around um, like their counters to me just by like, you know, playing inefficiently, but 
how if I do well enough, the synergy of our team will just kind of like make up for the fact that I'm, you know, doing silly things to just avoid like possible pitfalls. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Someday well, I'll learn Arc Warden. Not today. You're not going to uh, ever learn Arc Warden, dude. That's it's not true. Your, it's not your kind of hero. That's very true. It, so, it's so close to being your kind of hero, though. Like, it's that yeah. flighty, don't touch me, not yeah. totally muscle dude who's going to blink Sven stun someone. Like, that's, you know, you can play Arc Warden. Yeah, someday, two, maybe. Two units, though. Like, you don't like multiple unit dude dudes. Uh, yeah. You that, you'll, well, you'll I play like... Forge Spirits. It's just, you don't micro them a lot. Uh, I micro Forge Spirits like crazy, dude. All right. I, I don't just, know. I'm just saying, of all the invokers I've played with, I think you're the one that I ping their Forge Spirits most often. I think that's incorrect. Uh, okay. I like Necrobook a lot also, but too that's bad it fair. sucks. Oh, you play um, Naga, too. Yeah, I do play Naga also. Yeah, okay, you um, can play Arc Warden, like... You're despicable. Like, go for it. <laughs> yes. All right. Uh, so the next pick was the enemy team that picked Anti Mage. So their safe lane is now cr- uh, fully created. Um, right. And Anti Mage. What do we think about the Anti Mage pick in this game? Um, we kind of freaked me out. Yeah, it was kind of random. Kind of completely random and bad, as far as I'm concerned. No, I, I thought it was decent. It, like it freaked me out in a good in like a good way for them because like, really? I suck against them, dude. Like that's you know true. What? Arc Warden's all about zoning. You know what's better than fucking Goku with instant transmission and a fucking Abyssal Blade and a Manta style? Like, I can't do shit. I'm going to place a bunch of proximity mines and he has Blink. Like, I gotta... I'll die. You know, I put down a bubble. He fucking blinks. I die, dude. That's a bad situation. Then, like, what? Crystal Man's got freeze me Mantis. And then, like, oh, shit! We have nothing! And that's how I was hoping the game would go, but thankfully, you know, our, our ability to five man kind of out uh, outshine that one. Yeah, I, I mean, the, my main concern is a. We've talked about this before, but AM is not a great pub hero. Like he's a relatively decent hero in general if you're coordinated, but in pubs, it's a bit chancy. Yeah. Um, like I, I love AM, but I rarely play him in pubs nowadays. But a. AM has to have a relatively decent laning phase or at least have space creators on his team, right? And he does not have a lot of space creation with a team comp like his. And our team comp is already, you know, oriented to negate him space, right? We have a pretty forceful team comp, even disregarding our fifth pick. Our fifth pick could have been anything. And our four heroes are still pretty push heavy, pretty aggressive. And... Us being aggressive on top of the fact that we have a CM who needs to get a Manta to counter, and we have an Arc Warden who is a common Orchid builder, like Bloodthorn builder. Um, and also, once he has that Manta, which Doctor's cast going to be bouncing around between his illusions, potentially? Um, those are those would be my concerns. If I was on the Dire team and I was the one choosing carry, I would likely not have chosen AM here. I don't know what the alternative would yeah. have been. Um... But I feel like Anti Mage is a weird pick here that did not obviously it didn't work out for them. But I feel like there's enough reasons not to pick AM that I would have liked to choose something else instead. Yeah, I almost would have gone Life Stealer, even though Life Stealer sucks. I mean, the the best the best thing for them would be a Juggernaut here, but that's yeah. obviously what we picked, right? So that's uh, you know good drafting. Yeah, yeah. That I was, mean, that was another thing, dude. When we were in the Battle Cup, they they first toed Crystal Maiden and Kunkka, and then we had like the next pick. But we banned Juggernaut, and I had like looked away from the screen for two seconds, and I was like, "Oh my god, Rip. oh my god, what that have I was, done?" Like, no, I didn't. I didn't draft. It was you know it was someone else. Oh. Um, but I was. I was like, that was the perfect Juggernaut game, like Crystal Maiden and Kunkka. Yeah. Oh my god, I would love to play Juggernaut in that scenario. Holy shit! But anyway, yeah. So I mean, you stuck with like Life Stealer or something if, you, if you're them, maybe. I mean, Life Stealer is decent against Juggernaut. It's like kind of yeah. even, and then and he's good against Crystal Maiden, good against Witch Doctor. Um, but then you're stuck with you know with Life Stealer. So I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so our next pick was the classic, the classic fifth pick Broodmother. Mm. Um, the person had moused over Broodmother for the entire draft, if I recall correctly. That's like correct. After the first couple picks, they were like, yeah, I'm, pl- I'm going to play Brood. And I was like, hey, maybe maybe don't play Brood. Like, they have a Wyvern, and uh, even Wind Ranger's pretty good against Brood. Um, and Disruptor's yeah. also decent at killing Spiderlings, or at least keeping track of Brood, more importantly. Um, but also, the, the Wyvern was my primary concern uh, for the person picking Brood. They did it anyway. Um, and it ended up 
doing really well against the anti mage, and it took a lot of distraction from their supports. And and it did brood things. Like they took towers pretty early, then they died a bunch because they tried to siege with us instead of sieging elsewhere. And it was kind of like you know, it, by it a was, bunch, a bunch we mean once. Well, once, but um, I mean, other than that, they had no deaths. Like it would have been right. a perfect game for them. True. Um, Not also, they had to like me, Sam back off and leave some other times anyway regardless it was just a brood game like anybody can think of how a brood game goes and that's how this brood mother played yeah. like they stayed in the off lane for a very long period of time and they got their towers we distracted from them they took a lot of uh, attention away so the supports left the wind ranger alone they couldn't gank the anti-mage let's see when did he get his uh his battle his worth was good i mean at 10 minutes he was higher net worth than you you fucking idiot like well, I was fighting constantly with the freaking because I was alone yeah, well, against the an Wind Ranger. Mage against a Brood Mother. Yeah, I guess wow, he, was, he had he was two alone. supports. Yeah, they, the Ant Mage had supports. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's see. When did he get his Battle Fury? He got Treads first. You know, good on. Good. And then yeah, he got Battle Fury at 18 minutes. That's not good. Okay. Yeah, it's not good, but it's not as bad as some games, right? Um, yeah, especially if he's getting you know getting the whole Treads. Get him a roll, get yeah. him a gong against a Brood Mother. Yeah, it's it's a salvageable timing. Um, but then after that, he got pressured way harder, and we took over their jungle at one point, yeah. um, and pretty alienated him from any source of farm. Um, so yeah, there was a, also, I mean, to to further shut down the anti mage, there was actually, I mean, I, I say I don't really like Arc Warden against anti mage, but it is really good against the split push, man. Like all I would do is yeah. I would just summon a double and then just town portal scroll over to a tower, and then anti mage like you you don't know whether it's the real or the double arc warden. So he would just yeah. kind of like back off because it's the double, or if it's real and he blinks on it, and then I summon my double, he dies. But if it's the double and he, like it's 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 actually pretty cool. Um, so he would just kind of like wait, see, you know, it's my double, but he doesn't really want to blink on it, and it's just yeah, it's, it's it's enough to like kill the wave and get him to you know fuck off. So that was actually pretty cool. Like he really wasn't able to split push that much. My ulti comes up every like forty seconds or whatever. So you know like no, no harm, no foul to me. All right, and the last pick to round out the draft was Dragon Knight from the Dire team. So yeah, now dude. we know we have complete information. We know the mid matchup is going to be Dragon Knight versus Arc Warden. What do you think about the matchup? And do you think that DK was a good pick here? Because you're the DK player. Yeah, um, I just kind of lose on DK these days. I'm, I, I think I'm actually just not be good at him. Um, but I I think the DK was okay. I would want someone that's a little better at abusing the Arc Worm. Although, I mean, like, Dragon Knight is in the middle of the creep wave all the time. And even if I do slow him up, like, I can't kill that dude. Um, yeah, I mean, I think, I think it was fine. He... Arc Warden doesn't have a lot of damage. Dragon Knight can get a Quelling Blade and just, you know, never miss a CS, basically, um, and further reduce my damage with Dragon's Breath. And he pretty much ended up, like, dominating the lane at some point. Uh, like, his animation is pretty decent, um, and I just, like, had less CS than him. Uh, but at some point, he went to rotate, and I rotate better than him, so we just, like, yeah. ended up killing him bottom. That was great. But, yeah, I mean, I think it was fine. Uh, I mean, they're a team with two fives, right? That fucking sucks. And they have a Wind Ranger who's not going to make any... Like, they have two fives and a ranged, squishy, like, fluttery offlaner, right? Like, that's... Like, you got to pick a DK there. You don't have yeah. really another option. Like, your other option is... I don't know, like... Viper? I don't know. Either. Yeah, Death Viper. Prophet, maybe? Death Prophet oh, would have been okay. Oh, Death would have been cool. Yeah, but they, they still would have no lockdown. I mean, they would... I guess they have Disruptor ulti, but... Yeah, they've they've worn ranger. Yeah, I think just maybe Death Prophet was the was the better play, but I'm not entirely sure. Mid bristleback. No. No. This is disappointing. Um. Yeah. yeah so Fiend, I don't know. I mean, yeah, yeah. Dra Dra Dragon Knight was fine. They they honestly did need just like a stun, you know, and that's kind of what what they got. I think Queen of Pain would have been okay too if they just kind of abandoned the idea of making a team that synergized together and just did one that would terrorize our squishy ass <laughs> yeah. birds. I think that's like a totally valid way to go. Um, or if they just so happened to be a good Meepo player, maybe they could have been that, but I don't think they were. Yeah. Yeah, altogether, I think we pretty solidly won out on draft over them. Like, we had some weaknesses, they had some weaknesses. But if I had to kind of summarize everything before we close out, I would say each team had the core weakness of having two fives, which is, you know, they kind of more or less counter each other out since both teams had this problem. But yeah. it was noticeable in both team comps that neither team comp rotated, really. Like, 
the enemy team they rotated eventually supports into the offlane to kind of do like a 3v3 thing when they were pushing. Actually, it was a 4v3. But in general, you know, the mids were just a one one on one. And like occasionally somebody would come, but basically not at all. Like it's just yeah. very simple. You know, you have three heroes here. We have one on one here and we have a one on one here uh, or a three on one here. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I think the enemy team was just they had an awkward carry pick that didn't synergize with their team comp. And they did not have a good way they did not deal well with our team once we five manned like we yeah. won a couple fights we had a small advantage and then we just took over the entire map um yeah, like they, they have some nice ideas going on it's just that like they didn't all mesh together right like oh we have the dragonite to hold down our team fight but we're against a kind of like snowball-y push team and we have an anti-mage who can't participate at all so if we don't win a couple early team fights we just straight up fucking lose. And there's just nothing that we can do about it. Like they, they only had a couple paths. This is something I was thinking about, like kind of like at night yesterday, but like you want to draft a team that has multiple paths to victory. Like Uh the second you don't draft an AOE stun, the like, there's a lot of ways to win Dota two games, right? Like, Oh, I'm, we're at a disadvantage, but, um, catch a centaur stomp on three at 40 minutes that can just be straight up a win. But like yeah. if you don't have an a- if you don't have a single AoE stun, there is literally never going to be a time in a game of Dota 2 where you just stun three people for no fucking reason and win out of nowhere. And like if you pick an anti or if you pick like an anti mage and a Dragonite or something, if you pick those two heroes together, like the Dragonite has a chance to just kinda like snowball and win the game. But if you pick a, a Dragonite with an anti mage, you pick the Dragonite, but there's just a big X over like chance to just snowball and fucking win. Like it's gone. You're, you're just not going to do that. Um, and they had, they had a lot of things that like opened up possible um, like paths to victory, but then none of their picks emphasized them. So like they got kind of halfway to a bunch of strategies, but then just like none of them came together from, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree completely. That's, that's a really good point. Um, all right. So you can watch the VOD for Disruptor that game. built of Vlad's at 34 minutes. What do you think about that? Not not good. I didn't know that happened. Jesus. I'm just looking at the items and it's just like, well, the Vlad's here. Yeah, boy, that's awkward. Um, I mean, we are already past an hour. Uh, were there any big yeah. items that you want to talk about? Because I don't want to um, go through everything. No, I mean, just like Ar- Ark Warden-wise, um, he's, he's good. I managed to skip Bottle uh, and I just bought like an extra Tango because we had a Crystal Maiden and I was like getting out CS. I was just like happy. I just had shit CS. Um, I've been having like weird issues with my laning lately, um, but I, I haven't played Arc Warden mid in a very long time, so I'm going to blame a little bit to that. Uh, but I, I just like didn't have a lot of CS, so I was very happy to skip bottle. Um, and yeah, just you know, fucking Aquila and Quill and Boots. And I got a Midas. You know what happened after that? I built Phase Boots. That's like something that people have been doing recently. And that was kind of like, I don't want to go up against this anti mage late game. And if I get Phase Boots, like, you know, it's a lot of damage. And I it also goes to my double, right? So. It's kind of like actually plus 50 fucking damage, which is pretty good. Like, yeah, going for travels is nice, but like a double phase boot at like, you know, 12 minutes or something when my hero does almost nothing else is pretty good. And I just went, you know, into Maelstrom because I was doing a good amount of like right clicky stuff and it gives me some attack speed for my phase boots and I got the attack speed talent. So I was like, fuck it, let's right click. I want to end this game. Um, and then afterwards, I got the, the Dragonlance because um, Wind Ranger got a, a Rod of Atos. And I didn't really want to get like a Manta or whatever, so I just figured I'd get a four staff eventually. It's like, okay, if I get a toast or whatever, I can four staff out. I can four staff if the disruptor drops a, a field, and I want to like you know get out of it. Um, not that you can get out, but you know like it takes it sets it up, and then a second later it pops up. Like I want to be able to force out of that if that's possible. Get away from a Dragonite if you try to blink stun. Get away from a Wyvern. You know like oh shit, I'm out of position. I'm gonna get Wyvern ulti four staff out. Oh, dodge is great. Uh, I just wanted the options because we were kind of like ahead at that point and I just want a bunch of uh, like attack range because like like you said, like we didn't have a lot of initiation. It was a lot of them coming to us. So the safer we could be at any given time, the more likely their initiation was to not fuck us completely over. So I just wanted like as much as possible that we could siege safely. Um, so I, I ended up with just like fucking Maelstrom, Hurricane Pike or some shit like that. And then I just went into Mjolnir because you kept getting fucked up and I wanted to put uh, Lightning Shield on you um, mm-hmm. just to make again our counter initiation decent. And then I got Orchid after because hey, Orchid, good stuff. That's for sure. Oh uh, yeah, and I just did standard things. I just went like Aki phase, 
PMS, Quelling Blade, you uh, Manta. Because you had, we had a I CM, did skip so I wand. You felt comfy skipping the wand. Yeah, basically. Uh, and then I just went Abyssal. I wanted to. I flirted with the idea of doing some other things, but I ended up just doing basic stuff. What, I wanted more CC. What similar things? Uh, I wanted. I was thinking about going Maelstrom, Hurricane but then Pike. you did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Hurricane Pike. I was thinking about that pretty seriously. Yeah. Um, or just getting a, like an early blink uh, because I was having yeah. a lot of problems just with the supports or we as a team were just having problems with supports. So I was thinking like, all right, I'm just going to blink to backline, ult one of the supports, then be done with it. Yeah. Um, blink, but, blink Jug is so fucking good, man. Like, yeah. But wild. then I, at the point where I had a bunch of money, the anti-mage went second item BKB because he was having such a miserable time. Yeah. And all our CC for him was bkb avoidable right so i was like i just we just need abyssal so i just went abyssal yeah yeah i think that was a play also we were like sieging or whatever and yeah. if you're blinking instead of just like being tanky and helping me punch towers then we're just never gonna kill a tower yeah absolutely uh all right so you can watch the vod for this game on youtube.com slash dot ptv one as a numeric one you can follow us on twitter i'm at arsinity our show is at dot p underscore show proud is at proud dota we have a Discord, discord.gg slash dot p. We have a Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash dot ptv. And yeah. next week is the last week of our in-houses for this season because oh. TI is coming up. And then we'll be, on, and we'll be on break uh, until they restart soon I'm, after TI. I'm going to miss I'm gonna miss those. It's a shame we're never doing them again. Yep, they're, they're gone forever. Goodbye. We, we have to fire Grouty now. That's it. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, we have other plugs. Sorry, I mean I meant that's it for the grouty thing. <laughs> okay. You can support us on Patreon, patreoncom slash Defense of the Patients. You can get all kinds of things there. We appreciate your support. It, it helps us tremendously. Keep the lights on. Keep stuff coming out. Keep you know new ideas and whatnot. And Not get the Patreon exclusives. The Patreon exclusive episodes of the podcast are honestly so good. Like somebody we we're talking about it in Discord, and someone's like, "Yeah, they're the grade A, God, like the grade A Wagyu beef." of the dot p okay. content or like they're just the yeah. best no i i'd agree i was kind of bitter that i wasn't on that one but it's probably yeah. the best uh man juice had to work some magic to get that good because yeah that was his audio got messed issues, up but yeah it came out like totally fine i mean not yeah. totally fine you know obvi- it's obvious that he's not using the correct microphone but it is uh completely Perfectly understandable it sounds yeah. like anything normal that's like not a studio mic. Like it just sounds right. like a regular mic. But yeah, highly recommend do that. You can donate as little as a dollar and you get the Patreon episodes and they are good fun. There's two two a month, um, among other things. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it that, just that's you know, it shows us that you care is what, you know, like it's really what's important, right? Yeah. iTunes reviews also help us tremendously. So please do that. That costs you obviously nothing and helps us quite a bit. So that, that's about it for the plugs. I'm sure there's someone missed, but oh, you can give us feedback, defensivations at gmail.com. And that's, that's about that. Uh, remember, it's yeah. been our theory, and well, don't have two fives. Blame them, probably. Yeah, you should definitely not play two fives. Yeah.